Did you know that having a free Google business profile can dramatically increase how fast and how well a home or field service business can grow over time, even if you're just starting out and currently relying on referrals or direct sales? Many home or even commercial service business entrepreneurs don't realize just how powerful creating a Google business profile can be, and even fewer know how to use it properly so that you can set yourself up for success not just today, but well into the future as you decide to grow. So in this video, we're going to give you a comprehensive look at exactly how to build and harness the power of a Google business profile in 2024, heading into 2025, for your home or field service business, whether you're just starting out, starting to scale, or trying to expand your business into other areas, services, or even other businesses. We'll also share seven tips on how to optimize your Google business profile and build it into your day-to-day -day workflows, whether you're a solo owner operator or managing a team of field techs for your business. If you're new to the channel, my name is Joe Guevara and I'm the founder of Rehash Digital, a digital transformation agency specialized in helping home and field service businesses become more efficient, drive growth, and create better experiences through technology. As always, while our content is fully independent and unsponsored, Rehash Digital is a certified partner of many of the software we test and review for home and field service businesses. So if you are planning to get new software and you use the links in the description below or on our website at rehash.tech software, you can get free trials or exclusive offers at absolutely no extra cost to you while also helping support the channel through a small referral fee. So if you do find this content valuable, clicking those links before your trials or purchases would be greatly appreciated and helps keep these videos coming while keeping your businesses operating efficiently. Alternatively, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as well. And on that note, let's dive right in. First of all, what exactly is a Google Business Profile? A Google Business Profile, formerly known as Google My Business, is an absolutely free tool that allows business owners to promote their business information on Google Search and Maps. If you've ever hopped onto Google Maps and looked at the business listings, all of those are Google Business Profiles, or GBPs. This is also the key element of how Google starts to understand your business so that if you decide to build a website or want organic SEO or even start paying for Google Ads, Google knows what your business does, where you are, and what kind of customers it likely needs to show your business to because keep in mind, Google's primary customer is the searcher, not your business. You can consider your Google business profile like your own piece of property or storefront on Google. When a potential customer is in a moment of need for your particular set of services, they turn to Google Search or Maps to fulfill that need as quickly as possible and start deciding which service providers they even want to reach out to. Your Google Business Profile is then built to help you attract, engage, and convert those customers in need. So as long as you have a way of getting reached, like a phone number, creating a Google Business Profile and getting it verified is an absolute must to start building your digital presence and lets you connect with customers through phone calls, messages, or booking appointments. You can collect and respond to reviews. You can see how customers interact and connect with your business on Google. And even as far as featuring your services and portfolio on Google directly, which are key things that entices a potential customer to choose your business over your competitors. Of course, the first step of that whole process is getting your profile set up properly. So let's take a look at just that. To get started, you need to go to google.com slash business. And it's worth bookmarking this address because once you have your Google business profile set up, you'll actually come back here later to manage your listing and profile information. Alternatively, you can always just Google your own business name once your profile is verified and ranked, which is what I personally do. Next, log in with your Google or Gmail account. If you don't already have one, you can create an account with any email address, but I highly recommend at least creating a free Gmail account to make your life easier. That said, a worthwhile investment is to actually buy a domain and get a professional email address through Google Workspace. It's a tiny cost, roughly $12 a year for a domain and anywhere from $5 to $15 US a month for a professional business email. This makes sure you don't have to change your business name in the future if somebody takes that domain, while also increasing your conversions because customers tend to trust businesses who have professional email addresses over ones with just a Gmail. If you plan to also build a website, I have some bundle offers like a year free of domain hosting and discounts on email hosting, so reach out to us if you're interested. Otherwise, just Google, Google Workspace, and you'll find their packages and pricing there. Next, enter your business name and a business address that isn't a PO box. This screen is very important, especially if you plan to do any marketing, build a website, or do any paid advertising in the future. A primary function of how Google verifies and understands your business is through what's called NAP, or Name, Address, and Phone Number. 
These are the three key identifiers that Google uses to recognize that you are a legitimate business and also scours listing sites like Yelp, Nextdoor, Thumbtack, and even Yellow Pages, among quite a few others, to determine your Google ranking. A big part of search engine optimization or SEO when you want traffic to your profile or your website from your local area is highly dependent on that being consistent across your listings across the internet. So if you hire a marketing agency, this is a big part of what they'll charge you in onboarding regardless if you do paid or organic SEO services. As a digital transformation agency, I always recommend more efficient ways to do this, like software that does this automatically, like Thrive, which includes listings management on 20 to 40 different listing sites as part of the service, depending on where you live. That said, it's an all-in-one business platform that also does quite a few other things, but primarily business and customer management. So it costs roughly around $200 a month for the full platform, but does pretty much everything you need if you want to automate and scale your service business. If that's out of your budget, you can definitely do this yourself manually, but make sure that you keep those three things, name, address, and phone number, consistent across every single listings platform. This is why I like to recommend my clients to have it in a unified piece of software so that if you ever change any of those three things in the future, it'll automatically update all of those other sites so you don't get penalized by Google by accident, and it's a lot less work on your part. Another important aspect of this address field is that it determines the serviceable area that your business will get found. Generally, this is a radius around the address you put in this field and determines if you appear in what's called a local map pack, which are the top three search results in any given address for a given search, like plumber near me. So yes, if you pull up Google Maps and search for plumber near me from one side of your city, you will typically get different businesses that pop up in those three results versus moving to a different location. This uses the customer's GPS from their phone or their IP address if they're on a desktop. Now you will still be able to select serviceable areas in the next stage where you select a radius around the address you select or a specific city, state, or group of zip codes that shows where your serviceable area is. But remember, the bigger your service area, it becomes more challenging to rank in those local map packs for each of those regions. So keep this in mind when you're just starting out. This leads us to step four. You choose whether you're a storefront or a service provider. I've worked with a very small minority of service business who actually have a retail location for their business where they might sell parts or have an office. So if you have a retail location, generally I'd recommend putting that address in your profile, which makes verification much easier and foolproof while also driving foot traffic to your retail location. But for the vast majority of home and field service businesses, your best bet is to just choose service provider. Next up, you have to choose your primary business category. If you don't have a website, this is the primary thing that tells Google exactly what it is you do and what kind of Google searches it'll even show your business for. This list isn't super comprehensive, so you do have to pick the closest one to what your business does. The major ones like HVAC and plumbing are typically listed, but if you do something like one of my recent clients who only does mailbox repairs and replacements, you'll have to pick something more broad like contractor as the category and make sure you update your description in the final step with the right keywords to describe your business so you can capture the types of searches that you want finding your business and even reaching out to you. This is where a big part of getting consulting services comes invaluable because selecting not just what services you plan to compete for or act as an entry point to your business becomes extremely relevant from a strategy perspective. A recent example of this is a client of mine in Hawaii who as a business is a plumber. But if you're local to Hawaii, first of all, aloha. But second of all, you know that most service businesses there typically run through coconut wireless, meaning most things are through word of mouth and referrals. But that doesn't mean that Google is dead. In fact, because of recent events in Maui, there is actually a services boom there for reconstruction and com competition is becoming extremely difficult for providers who want to expand and are competing against new service providers rushing to become certified. So as part of the project with my client, we narrowed down specific specializations under plumbing that would be valuable to target. And as we looked through their book of business and projects, realized that they were getting a decent volume of projects related to leak detection. I then found that there were decent search volumes related to that service and not a ton of competition for that specialization. So in their case, we're using leak detection as one entry point, meaning that's the search you're focused on competing in, but then built workflows to create a business and service model that lets them naturally upsell and cross-sell other plumbing services that they do that makes sense for the types of customers looking for that specific service, increasing their current and lifetime value per client. You can do this exercise across any industry or service type, and I highly recommend you take the time to do it. But of course, if you want a hand, I do offer limited free 15-minute consultations per week that you can book in the links in the description below. 
Next up, you need to add your phone number and website link if you have one. In addition to being an identifier for Google, your phone calls through Google are also tracked. And if you have a website, you can actually not only track website visits, but link it with other Google tools like Google Search Console and Google Analytics to figure out how your customers are finding you and how well you're converting those customers into actual paid jobs. But if you're just starting out, a website isn't absolutely necessary. But if you want to scale and better compete while also helping better qualify for various government grants and small business loans, it's very valuable and actually doesn't cost as much as many business owners thinks it does. For example, one of the things that my agency helps with is web development, and we personally use a no-code platform called Wix that has come a long way compared to when I first used it almost a decade ago. Compared to a standard WordPress website, it's much cheaper to develop on. I can build a website for as low as 600 to 1500 US with searchability and functionality equivalent to a two to $5,000 WordPress website while also being incredibly good looking and modern and being cheaper to maintain. If you're tech savvy, you can even try designing it yourself before you sign up for the platform. But if you ever get stuck, definitely give us a shout. I'll also be making a video comparing different web development platforms that are the best fit for home and field service businesses, regardless if you decide to outsource or plan to build it yourself. So definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with that. Last but not least, step seven is to verify your local listing. If you've done everything correctly, in order to manage your business information across search, maps, and other Google properties, you need to verify your profile, which usually is in the form of a postcard sent to the address you've listed in step three. If they need additional validation, you may need to send a video in to verify the storefront, if that's what you selected. And once you finish this process, then you're officially started on your way to getting free inbound leads to your business through Google. But of course, creating the profile is only the first step. You need to actually populate it with content over time to make sure that you're not just a blank profile if you have a hope of winning a click from someone who needs your services compared to your competition. So here are seven tips to keep in mind once you have your Google business profile set up and verified. Tip number one, ask for reviews. Now, this is probably the most important tip out of all of these. Google reviews are the single most powerful social proof indicator for any service business, even compared to service aggregators like Yelp or Thumbtack. But you have to make it easy to get reviews, so don't just leave it to chance. At the end of every job, ask for the review. I dive deeper into some of these tips on how to consistently get five-star reviews in this video over here. On a related note, tip number two is to make it easy to get reviews. When you ask for a review, don't just ask them to find your business on Google and leave it to chance whether they find even the right business. In your Google business profile, there's a section here that says ask for a review, which gives you a specific link that when you send it to your customer, whether that's via email, linked on your invoice, or even a text message, it'll automatically load up not just your business, but the actual review prompt and ask for the star rating as well asking for comments. Better yet, tip number three is to use the latest technology to get these reviews. The best time to ask for a review is when your client is at their greatest moment of satisfaction, which is right after the end of a job well done, not necessarily when you're asking them for money to pay an invoice. If you or your techs are in person with a client and you can make it super easy to give them a review by loading your Google review link onto an NFC card where you can ask the customer first if they're willing to give you a five star rating and then whipping out one of these bad boys and tapping it on their phone, which then brings up the same screen so you can get their review and testimonial at the moment of greatest satisfaction. Alternatively, you can also load up a QR code that you can put on the business card or even your van. And while not as simple as an NFC tap, this is still better than leaving the review process well after the job is already completed. We only develop these custom NFC cards for specific clients, but if we get enough demand, we might start selling our own version of these in the near future. So if this seems like it might be helpful to you, type NFC in the comments below along with the kind of business you have, and we'll respond back if we get enough interest. Next up is back to the maintenance of your actual business profile. You need to make sure you optimize your categories. As your business scales, always take a look at how you've set up your business profile initially and how you might need to change it. If you find that your primary category is too competitive, but offer other niche services under that category, consider changing the description of your business to target less competitive service keywords, much in the same way as you would optimizing your website. Very similar process to the leak detection I mentioned earlier. By far, it's easier to compete in a specialization as opposed to a generalist industry like plumbing and HVAC until you have a good amount of reviews and content on your page. 
But again, this is a generalization that also is impacted by other factors like where your business is even located. Now, to convert the traffic you get to actual paid jobs, it's best to use booking links or forms, which statistically increases the chances of you converting those eyeballs into clicks by making it easy for customers to connect with you. This also gives you the added benefit of making your business more efficient by flowing that customer data into the rest of your processes automatically. If you really want to take your business to the next level, the software we test and recommend, you can check them out in this playlist over here, all have some form of booking links or contact forms that you can easily embed into Google as well as your website. Not only will this make it easy to track and make your business extremely efficient by reducing manual data entry, but you'll also prevent yourself from missing out on high value leads if, for example, you only rely on phone calls to a single phone number and get a decent volume of leads where it becomes easy to lose track of your communications. Next, your Google business profile is also technically a mini social media platform, which means you also have to make sure you're optimizing your images and posts. Your Google business profile is the prime place next to your website to post the portfolio of work you've done. Even if you don't have a design centric business like interior design, contracting or construction, services like plumbers, electricians and HVAC businesses who have pictures of their vans, their teams working or even photos of them with happy customers do significantly better since all of these act as social proof that you are a real and reputable business with real clients. I would suggest at minimum posting a new photo once a month just to make sure Google still knows your business is alive and this also helps to increase your search rankings as well. Lastly, a bit more advanced but well worth for any service business owner to understand and master are your insights and analytics. Google, as you probably know, is big on data and analytics. As a consumer, you might find it a bit creepy to think about just how much Google knows about you, where you are, what websites you visit, and so on. However, as a business owner, those same things are to your advantage. Figuring out where your traffic is coming from, what your customers are searching for, what causes them to convert into jobs, how they want to get in contact with you, and where your highest paying and best customers are coming from are just some of the things you can understand from the data that your Google Business Profile and Google Analytics can give you. If you understand all of these, you can then continue to optimize and refine your whole business so that you can better find new customers, better service the customers you get, become more efficient, and find more and higher value clients. All that said, while there are a lot of things you can do to optimize a Google business profile, the most important part is simply to start and build one since it's absolutely free. But if you start getting success and get new customers calling you from your Google business profile, and you wanna expand beyond just word of mouth and referrals, and you wanna scale your business, it could be worth investing in technology to make your business more efficient and organized so you get more bandwidth, or improving your presence online so you can optimize the leads that you do end up coming to you, especially if you invest in paid advertising. If that's the case, definitely see if there's availability for a free consultation so me or my team can help you find the right software and technology for your home or field service business. Or check out the links in the description below or our website, rayash.tech software, to trial them out yourself. If you want more details, check out this video over here for a detailed review and comparison. If you have any questions about your Google business profile, though, feel free to post them in the comments below and we read and respond to all of the comments. So if you found this video helpful for your own business and want more helpful advice around improving your home or field service business digitally, I would greatly appreciate a like and subscribe to help keep these videos coming or share this video with others you think might help out. This is Joe signing out, and I'll see you all in the next one.